It was an event that people who lived through it will never forget. It was complete destruction, utter chaos, completely devastated. But just the, the amount of wind and the amount of trees down as you go from Albany down into the Gulf Coast. There was not a house in the neighborhood that either um, didn't have a, a tree on the roof, a tree in the yard. Um, I mean, bricks were blown off of houses. It looked like a war zone. It was very emotional just to hear the stories. I really felt helpless. I felt like there wasn't much I could do in that instance, but just pray and hope. It was really amazing how everyone came together. I do think that people depended on the news, right? They, they listen and they look to us to tell them what they need to do and what they need to know. I definitely think that Hurricane Michael showed the resiliency and the strength that Southwest Georgia has because after tornadoes and even a hurricane still coming together, and making things work. WALB News 10 presents Hurricane Michael Through the Storm. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this special edition of WALB News 10. I'm Jim Wallace. And I'm Carla Heat Sands. It may be hard to believe, but it's been exactly one year since Hurricane Michael ravaged Southwest Georgia, Florida, and parts of the Carolinas. Hurricane Michael was swirling at 160 miles per hour when it slammed into the Florida Panhandle. That's a Category 5 hurricane on the Safer Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale. Michael was one of the worst recorded storms in modern history. It's one of only four Category 5 hurricanes on record to ever hit the U.S. mainland. The last one was Hurricane Andrew, which hit South Florida and Louisiana back in 1992. Now the storm passed over western Cuba as a Category 2 hurricane before making landfall near Mexico Beach and the Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida. It resulted in 16 deaths and $25 billion in damage in the U.S. Now over the next hour, we're going to look back at that devastation Hurricane Michael left across southwest Georgia. It looked like God had stuck his arm out and just swung it across a forest of trees and just laid them all down. And highlight the lessons that we learned from the storm. You will hear inspiring stories of hope that emerged through the destruction. Even in the midst of tragedies, there are good things that come out of, out of that situation. As strangers came together to help their neighbors in need. For the WLB First Alert weather team, Hurricane Michael was a storm that they will never forget. Now looking back, they say the experience was a defining moment in their careers. In the days leading up to Hurricane Michael's landfall, WLB News 10's First Alert weather team knew Southwest Georgia was in for a massive weather event. It was coming through Southwest Georgia. And again, I think the, the only thing that we weren't sure about was how strong it was. The problem with this storm in itself, it was so massive and it was moving very fast. Two days out, the First Alert weather team was sending out the warning. This is borderline category five. While also preparing for coverage during the hurricane. We strategized what we were gonna do um, and to keep our viewers safe at home. The weather team used every platform to pass along the National Hurricane Center's forecast and warn what people had to do to protect their lives. When you see terms like catastrophic damage, there will be a loss of life, then you want to make sure that people are aware of what to expect and that they are prepared. The weather team says most South Georgians heeded the warnings, but some disagreed. We did get uh, phone calls into the newsroom day, two days prior to the storm saying, you know, why are you all, you know, using this language? You know, um, this is just gonna be like another Irma. Yeah, I still think there was um, a minority who believed that it wasn't going to be as bad as, as we had forecast. We are hearing what you're hearing outside. The winds are howling, the rain is coming down in sheets. But well, the hurricane forecast was chillingly correct. Michael hit the panhandle as a Category 5 and roared into South Georgia at least a Category 3. Power losses prevented reliable information. We never got an accurate reading of the wind speeds in Albany. Um, and I don't think we got accurate wind speed readings almost across most of Southwest Georgia. Yolanda, Chris and Bradford stayed on the air most of the day and the night as Hurricane Michael roared through South Georgia. Now here at our Channel 10 studio, when it hit, the roof tiles above us were shaking and slamming back and forth, made a deafening roar inside the studio. These lights were swaying back and forth. There was a lot of dust, but our meteorologists stayed on the air even as their own safety was in question. More debris was coming down. We also had a water leak 
um, toward the green screen eventually. So um, it was scary in here because we didn't know. It was frightening in here to keep hearing the shingles on the roof up and down and persistently and you heard the wind outside. The rain was just really pounding away at the building. But you know, we are here to make sure that viewers are safe. The weather team broadcast throughout the day, night and into the next day before leaving the weather center for their first look at what Hurricane Michael left. I had never seen anything like it. Trees were down, power lines down everywhere, power, power poles snapped. Um, I, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing as I drove home. Over the next few days, many viewers meeting our weather team would thank them for their coverage, saying it saved lives. People would hug you, you know, and that probably happened for you too. Um, so they were, I mean, they, they, a lot of people were very thankful um, for our coverage and just preparing them for what was about to come. They was just grateful that we gave them a lead warning and that we kept them abreast of what was happening during the entirety of the storm moving across South Georgia. Hurricane Michael was a determining event for WLB News 10 and the weather team. One event that points out why their training and expertise is vital to South Georgia. Our meteorologists say these are the lessons learned from Hurricane Michael. Prepare, have emergency supplies ready ahead of time. Now that includes a NOAA weather radio. Plan, make an emergency plan. Make sure your family knows what that plan is. And no, sign up now for emergency alerts. Our first alert weather team will send you alerts through our WALB first alert weather app. It is free in the App Store and it's simple to download. We'll let you know the moment any severe weather threatens our area. Southwest Georgia experienced an unprecedented catastrophe when Hurricane Michael hit. Now in those moments of destruction, one precious life was taken in Southwest Georgia. Our Paige Dyer sat down with the Radney family who says they still long for the little girl they lost. It's almost been a year since 11 year old Sarah Radney passed away. To this day, Roy and Amber Radney say they're constantly reminded of Sarah. I try to keep Sarah in, in a good memory, you know. I, she's involved every day. She's she's there. She's involved. In yeah, I, I talk to her 50 times a day. Roy was Sarah's stepfather. He says talking about what happened hasn't come easy. For the first couple months, every time I thought of it, which was a million times a day, you know, it would take my breath, my heart would sink. Sarah was at Roy's parents' home in Donaldsonville during Hurricane Michael when a carport blasted through their home, striking Sarah in the head. She wouldn't survive her injuries. And when the Radneys arrived, Roy says he couldn't bring himself to go inside. I didn't want to be there. It was, it was the place, Technique. it was the last place I ever wanted to be at that moment. But this wound heals a little more every Sunday when they visit Sarah's grave. I love talking about her. I love remembering her and, and looking at her stuff. I look forward to it every week. That's, that's kind of my thing. Her grave, decorated with the brightest flowers and her favorite animal. There's a little scarecrow and a pumpkin out there, so we, we, try, to, eh, we try to keep her up to date, you know what I mean? A year later, and they say their family is closer than ever, but they say it couldn't have happened without the tremendous amounts of love and support. Expose yourself to as much kindness and giving as you can because especially in a trying time like that where all you see is hurt and, and you're kind of angry, you need the good. In Cairo, Paige Dower, WAOB News 10. Kindness that's shown through the most in the wake of Hurricane Michael. For some, it was a calling to help their community. For others, it was a call of duty. Next, meet the men and the women of the National Guard who worked tirelessly for weeks to bring a sense of security to South Georgia. What I loved most um, was seeing that, you know, people of all different races, um, different backgrounds, rallying together to help one another. Like, I really do believe that Harry K. Michael uh, brought unity, um, not only to Albany, but to all the counties that, you know, we covered. It was, you know, folks from Albany going to Early County or folks from, from Bainbridge going to Seminole County. Like, you know, it was a South Georgia effort. Everyone helped one another Welcome back to Hurricane Michael Through the Storm. 
As we take a look back at the devastation, we want to tell you about one group who saw it firsthand. The Cabela Fire Department says they literally had to cut pathways through their city. Their goal to get to people to make sure that no one was trapped in their homes. Chief Jamie Sullivan says his firefighters were prepared even though the intensity of Hurricane Michael came as a shock. He says the department was forced to stop response in the middle of the storm because the wind was so strong, saying it simply wasn't safe for crews to be out. Sullivan offered this important reminder for homeowners in the area. That you make sure you cut your main power disconnect off and your gas, if it's natural gas and or LP gas, make sure that you cut the valves off that feeds your home the gas and electricity because after the storm, if you receive damages, that could make it in a worse situation. Chief Sullivan says his firefighters train constantly to ensure they're ready in case another storm like Michael comes through our area. Well, arguably, one of the most terrifying aspects of making it through the storm was the loss of power and with it, communications. The EMA Center in Mitchell County lost power and when they turned to the emergency generators at the 911 center, ran into mechanical issues. Once those were fixed, the center was still limited on resources. E911 Director Randy Johnson says his telecommunicators were prepared though. They used paper maps and handwritten notes to mark where damage reports were coming in for first responders. We continue to train annually. Uh, we have some scenario based training and, and of course it's not like the real thing when it gets here, but it does give our telecommunicators some idea of what they may be expected to, to do uh, when it actually gets here or prior to it and afterwards. Cable and cell phone services were out for days, leaving more than 400,000 seemingly isolated and in the dark. Some families say they were afraid. They took cover in basements with limited lighting. That's what happened to one WALB News 10 employee and her family. Liz Knight recalls hearing trees snapping and tumbling to the ground, not knowing what, if anything, was left of her home or property. She says it was a familiar voice on the radio that brought her comfort through the storm. We started going station by station to see if we could find any anything, any information out there. And we found Robert Heydrich. It was very comforting, you know, to hear a voice that you knew tell you, this is where the storm is. This is what you need to do. This is how much longer you need to wait. You may recognize that name. Robert Heydrich is one of our former sports directors. He now works for the governor's office for highway safety. During the storm, he helped the Georgia News Network relay vital information to South Georgians about Hurricane Michael. Heydrich was one of many good Samaritans who took the call to help his community. Georgia Air National Guardsmen say they saw South Georgia hospitality shine through in the days following the storm. They sent airmen to Seminole and Miller counties to clear roads and pass out supplies. That mission ended up being a life-saving event for at least one man. But as our Emily Forrester reports, if you ask them, it's just their job. And that's just part of our job. That's why we're here. It's just what we do. Service before self. It's a core value for the Air Force, and Georgia Air National Guardsmen proved it one year ago. Just driving in, it looked like a desolate ghost town. The Air National Guard sent several groups of airmen to southwest Georgia in the days following Hurricane Michael. It looked like God had stuck his arm out and just swung it across a forest of trees and just laid them all down. One group went to Seminole County to clear roads. Another coordinated a system to pass out supplies like water, food and tarps in Miller County. Tech Sergeants Lauren Swanson, Eric Glass and Anthony McConnell served in Colquitt. We didn't have a loading dock, so we had to do it all by hand and we offloaded more than three million pounds of food, water, MREs, tarps. Just come on back. But their work went beyond the physical act of passing out those necessities. We had a couple people, uh, not even gender specific, but come through the line and just break down. They served as a shoulder to cry on for people who had lost virtually everything in one fell swoop. Heartbreaking because a lot of them get really emotional when they come through the line. Just days after the hurricane, Tech Sergeant Swanson put the service before self mantra into action. I saw a gentleman kind of slumped over uh, in his riding mower and there was a massive oak tree that had basically split his house in half and he didn't look too hot. She turned around to help. 
He was sheet white, sweaty. After learning the man didn't have water, food, or his medication, they got him some supplies. He didn't have anything, and he just progressively looked like he was getting worse and worse, so we called 911. That action likely saved the man's life, according to Georgia National Guard leaders. Swanson, though, doesn't think she did anything any other airman wouldn't have done. It was good to know that we got him, got him to the hospital to get him some care that he needed. While that story stands out in her mind, the memories of how people in Colquitt reacted to the airman's help have stuck with each guardsman. They say people who had just been hit by a hurricane were helping them cooking for them and even doing their laundry. It was very humbling. Their response was just overwhelming joy. All for these guardsmen who were just doing their job in southwest Georgia's time of need. To see these people that we're down there helping, we're giving them water, we're giving them food to turn around and help us is it's it's just very humbling. Emily Forrester, WALB News 10. Thousands of linemen flooded our area to restore power after the storm. There's no storm that can stop us. Straight ahead, hear from those who were the first in line to help. I tell you, when you see a community come together, when something like this happens, it really shows you the people that you're living around and near and with. Uh, like I was saying, the, the chainsaws, that was a, a sound that I still remember vividly because people were just coming out and helping people that maybe they didn't know or maybe they did know a neighbor or a friend or a family member or just a random stranger cutting down trees that may have fallen down in their homes, helping people get to where they need to be, food uh, given out to different people who didn't have it. I saw that, you know, those efforts come together really quickly. Welcome back to Hurricane Michael through the storm. Moments after Hurricane Michael devastated Grady County, linemen hit the pavement, working around trees and crumbled buildings. Our Paige Dower spoke with those who were on site when Michael came through. Device outage created. As Hurricane Michael ripped through Grady County, thousands of homes lost power within minutes. 911 was calling. Uh, transmission people were calling, um, customers were calling, and it was just, it was pretty, pretty intense. With phones ringing off the hook, EMC. Grady EMC dispatch had to move quick. It was chaotic. Immediately, Al Brogdon and others began strategizing. It was hard, but like I said, everybody, everybody uh, got together and stuck together, and we just started putting out fires one at a time. We prepared as much as we could, but Whenever it came and hit, it was unreal, the damage that happened. For the next few weeks, Blake Freeman and dozens of other linemen worked 16-hour days, putting their life and families on hold. We worked those long hours and then come home, and they'd be in bed when I got home. But each day, they'd suit back up, trying to restore power and a sense of normalcy as quickly as possible. It was joyful to see that you could get the lights on and help people. Freeman knows there's always the potential for another storm just around the corner, but Hurricane Michael showed them. When we all come together that, that uh, there's no storm that can stop us. In Cairo, Paige Dower, WAOB News 10. The Albany chain gang helped hundreds across South Georgia clear through wreckage after the storm, and they say there's still more work to be done. The group tells us they got over 3,000 phone calls from people in need of help. They worked on over 450 damaged homes from last October until June of this year, chopping and clearing massive trees. The volunteers clocked over 5,000 hours. They say although they also suffered during the storm, it was important to help those who needed it most. The veterans, the people that have you know, given their lives to our country, um, the people that are lower income, that they don't have any other means to be able to help themselves. You know, that's really, you know, I think our heart and our passion to be able to go and help them and be able to take care of them and make sure that they're, they're okay because they don't have the resources to do that themselves. Right now, they have less than 30 people who are still in need of help. We're told that they will resume assisting victims later this fall when the weather cools off. Hurricane Michael left a lot of physical damage across the community, 
But as we continue to clear away the debris, psychiatrists say it's also important to take stock of the emotional damage that storm could have caused. Health leaders with the Darty County School System say they saw an influx of students with storm-related anxiety after Michael. They say students showed signs of stress, anxiety, and trauma. Many were without water and electricity, or they were displaced. Behavioral specialists say they used various platforms to help students share their stories and process the trauma so they could begin to heal. It's a matter of helping students regain that equilibrium, that sense of normalcy, um, giving them an opportunity to let them come back to a safe place. Some students' homes were totally destroyed and unlivable now, so school helped to create an anchor for them. Health leaders say they have already seen the same fears and behavioral changes in kids this hurricane season. Right now, they're trying to help students cope and hope that they learn not every storm will bring about destruction. It may just be rain showers with some thundering and lightning. Of course, you, you're going to have some tense students, some stressed students. So just helping them to relax, teaching them mindfulness activities, teaching them ways to relax, um, helping them understand that being at school is a safe place. Behavioral specialists recommend talking to a psychiatrist if you see signs of storm-related anxiety or trauma in your children or if you experience it yourself. I think we can all agree Hurricane Michael left a deep lasting impact on everyone around us. For our reporters, it was a true test of their abilities. I think this station works as a team. Um, you know, it's a family. And you know, moving forward in that, that's, that's the best way that I could describe it. When we come back, a one-on-one -on -one interview with WALB News 10's general manager, Bruce Austin, about the role Hurricane Michael played in shaping young journalists. And so having that kit together, having water, having food that you can eat that's not going to go bad for, the, for a couple weeks, I mean, it sounds extreme, but we've, we found out in Seminole County it took a couple weeks to get power back, and so it's not extreme. Um, and having a way to get notified, too, because this was something we had prepared for for several days prior to, but there are storms that can put us in the exact same spot that may just pop up. Welcome back to Hurricane Michael Through the Storm. The National Weather Service is the government agency in charge of forecasting weather for the United States. They tracked Michael from when it initially formed to when it finally fell apart. Mark Wool is the Warning Coordination Meteorologist for their Tallahassee Field Office, which serves most of Southwest Georgia. He calls Hurricane Michael an unprecedented event. He also tells us the biggest lesson their office learned was the need to have better communication, especially with senior citizens. Making sure people understand that, look, we're going to have the most likely forecast out there, but you have to focus on and prepare for what we call the, quote, reasonable worst case scenario, because Michael was the worst case scenario. Wool says one of the most important factors is preparing ahead of time. That includes packing that emergency supply kit so you can evacuate at a moment's notice. These are the 15 basic supplies the American Red Cross says you should pack. Water, one gallon per person per day. You need to have a three-day supply for an evacuation and a two-week supply for home. Food, non-perishable items like peanut butter and canned meat. It's the same amount as water, a three-day supply for an evacuation and two-week supply for home. Pack flashlights and batteries. Always pack extra batteries. A battery powered or a hand crank radio. The Red Cross recommends the NOAA weather radio. Deluxe family first aid kit. At least a seven day supply of medications and medical items. Sanitation and personal hygiene items, including toilet paper, trash bags, and sanitizer. An emergency blanket. You'll want one of those for each member of your family. A multi-purpose tool. Cell phones with chargers. They could be a track phone you keep in the pack or an extra charger for your smartphone. Extra cash maps of the area, family and emergency contact information, which should include the phone numbers and addresses, and copies of any personal documents. That includes a list of any medication or pertinent medical information, proof of your address, your passports, birth certificates, insurance policies, and the lease or deed to your home. It's also important to remember to pack for your pets. We broke down the items you should include for them over on our website. Just look for the Hurricane Michael tab at the top of the page at WLB.com. 
Here at WALB, we juggle preparing for severe weather in our personal lives while ensuring our viewers get the information they need. Our general manager, Bruce Austin, says it's that balance that tested the WALB News 10 team. Our Bobby Portovitz sat down with him to look back at the storm that created such historic havoc for so many in the South. We knew, you know, this wasn't the time really to, to just, you know, relax. Uh, but to stay on guard and to make sure everybody uh, truly were safe out wherever they were. WALB News 10's General Manager Bruce Austin recounts how the station pulled together during Hurricane Michael. He says surviving disasters like Michael, you learn a few things about technology and how it's a very fragile connection between us and the outside world. I'll tell you, the first thing you learned in a hurricane is that cell towers don't work. Communication is of utmost importance in our business. What we did find is that a broadcast TV station is extremely important today. Um, and you, I, in my mind, it will be important for years to come. He remembers the WALB News 10 team that tiredly and through Michael's fury provided storm coverage through direct contact with first responders and many others. One of the things that, that I really saw out of the MMJs especially is how quick they grew up. Um, you know, we do have a lot of young MMJs here, a lot of young reporters. And, you know, when they, after that storm, it's almost like they, they, they took a step forward in their career a little bit because they know now how to do things and to stay safe, but also they know what their main job is, and that's to inform our public about things that are going on around them. One of his proudest moments comes from the first alert team that saved lives. They sacrifice their family time to protect our people. Um, so to me, they are first responders, our, our meteorologists, hands down. They warn people, they save people's lives. So when I look back and reflect on the performance of these guys, there's no way I can feel like we did anything incorrectly. I think this station works as a team. Um, you know, it's a family. And, you know, moving forward in that, that's, that's the best way that I could describe it, is that we're moving forward as a family here. We're not an individual system. In Albany, Bobby Portavent, WALB News 10. Bruce Austin officially took over as the general manager January 1st. Before that, he was WALB's general sales manager. Understanding the true cost of the storm will take years to fully grasp. Straight ahead, the devastating blow Hurricane Michael caused to the agriculture industry and the delay, many farmers say, costs them even more. Farmers are all built on faith. Everything they do, the cause of the economics of what the American farm is, is built on faith. So to have something like this come along is, you know, devastating. There was no doubt about it. They lost everything in their head in the fields because of Hurricane Michael. Welcome back. You are watching a WALB special, Hurricane Michael Through the Storm. Some people lost their family homes, precious memories, and sense of safety. But there's one impact of the storm that carried a much heavier blow to the entire state. Georgia's top cash crops were ravaged. Farmers lost billions. Many say they will never recover. From peanuts to pecans and vegetables, the economic damage racks up to nearly two and a half billion dollars in Georgia alone. Cotton is the top row crop in the state. The Georgia Department of Agriculture estimates less than 15% of it had been harvested before the storm. Coming off the heels of Hurricane Irma, farmers hope to use the 2018 growing season to bounce back. Some agriculture experts argue that pecan farmers were impacted even more than the cotton industry. It takes at least a decade for pecan trees to get back in production. Since many farmers were forced to wait 11 months for the government to release federal disaster relief funding, they say they are now another year behind. Now, our Marilyn Parker shows us how one farmer in Mitchell County was able to move forward despite the delay in funding. Because if you do this, Miley Adams calls it the perfect storm. It was just a mess. His farm faced Hurricane Michael's fierce wind speeds whipping through his crops in Mitchell County. And with all that canopy on the trees and all, it just caught the whole tree. It would bring it over and just bring it down. Clearing out his 600 acres of cotton, reducing valuable pounds of pecan to useless pieces. Probably the most devastating 
uh, storm I've ever been in. Many farmers grew desperate for government disaster relief. It's getting a little bit precarious. The younger farmers, they, they need some help. We all need some help. One year later, he's restored 4,000 young pecan trees on his land. Most of these older trees were anywhere from 50, uh, 25 to about 75 years old. And so that's a, lot, that's a lot of history that's gone. He says stories of triumph will come from what's planted here today. We're starting with new trees, new varieties, and, and of course that's, that's the name of the game anyway. Plants with higher production value and resistance to diseases, he says, will make all the difference. Even in the midst of tragedies, there are good things that come out of, out of that situation. In Mitchell County, Marilyn Parker, WALB News 10. Roughly 80 counties across the state are eligible for federal relief funds. Applications opened last month for Wildfire and Hurricane Indemnity Program Plus. It's more commonly referred to as WIP Plus. Details on how you can apply are posted in this story on our website. Look for that under the Hurricane Michael tab at the top of the homepage at WLB.com. Don't go anywhere. We've got a deeper look at what changes emergency agencies enacted in the aftermath of Hurricane Michael. There's no amount of planning that fixes losing everything. But what you can do is figure out what the best available workarounds might look like. That's Jenna Chang, an EMA specialist for Darty County. She walks us through how Michael shaped their emergency response plans and the crucial lesson they learned from the storm. The community support rallying around each other um, for those you know highest impacted by the storm, um, you've got to really see um, you know, the humanity aspect of South Georgia and the people um, coming together and helping one another, um, you know, physically, emotionally. Um, and I think that's one of the most rewarding things is seeing um, after tragedy, people coming together in your own community and, and, and helping one another. Welcome back to Hurricane Michael Through the Storm. Albany is no stranger to storms, and the city's level of preparation before Michael proved it. The city has a warehouse full of supplies. It contains everything from sewer pipes to electrical wires and even toilet paper. It's all meticulously organized so linemen or crew members can run in, get the material they need, and get back on the road. City leaders say that level of organization helped them restore power quickly after Michael. Every time they even go through small storms, we're learning new things to make things more efficient and to help our customers because we understand that our customers need the power to for their hospitals, for their schools, for breathing machines, and we want to make sure that we have a good stock within our warehouse to take care of our community. Nichols says the warehouse played a vital role when crews from other cities came to assist. Albany linemen could show the helping crews where to go to get them out in the city as quickly as possible. Darty County Emergency Operations staff began preparing for Hurricane Michael a week before the storm blew into South Georgia. Our Bradford Ambrose sat down with the county's EMA specialist to find out the lessons their department learned in Michael's aftermath. Snap trees, down power lines, and trees toppled on homes. This is just some of the damage Doherty County saw in the wake of Hurricane Michael. The first thing that kind of went through my mind was, okay, here we go again. Jenna Chang is the EMA specialist for Doherty County. Chang says they took what they learned from the 2017 straight line winds, tornadoes, and Hurricane Irma, and implemented them for their Hurricane Michael response. Among the improvements were better communication with the public and improved logistics. The county also knew what type of help it would need after the storm, so they reached out for early assistance. And what that allowed us to do is make a lot of requests of the state before landfall. We knew they couldn't send it to us, but if we requested what we knew we would need, should we have the impact we anticipated, we wanted to make sure that we were close to the front of that line so that our community didn't have to wait. But according to Chang, there was one thing the county could not foresee the county losing all of its infrastructure. You can make contingency plans for losing your main source of communication or your secondary source 
or both of those, but we literally lost every type of communication we had. Cheng says they had to resort to pen and paper and driving to send and receive messages. There are some disasters that are so large scale that you're gonna struggle through them, that there's no amount of planning that fixes losing everything. But what you can do is figure out what the best available workarounds might look like. And one of those workarounds is a different radio system. The county is looking at a system that uses another source of technology that would provide better coverage. None of these things are foolproof. None of these things are guaranteed. But the more redundant communication we add to what we have available to us, the better chance we have that something will work. I'm Bradford Ambrose for WAOB News 10. Chang hopes some of the things they learned will spread out into the community so everyone can better prepare themselves for the next natural disaster. One year after Hurricane Michael, some neighborhoods appear as though nothing happened. Others look like the storm rolled through just last week. Straight ahead, the efforts the crews continue to make to help push the community forward on the road to recovery. I think South Georgians now take storms very serious. They know that not only do they need to be prepared, but they need to keep up with uh, rapidly changing weather conditions. Many times uh, things change so rapidly, you don't have the opportunity to stop and think about what am I going to do? And that's why it's so important to make sure that everyone has a plan for protective action and that they practice it with their families. In the event that these storms pop up with very little notice, or any warning at all, that way everybody knows immediately what to do in order to save their life. Welcome back to Hurricane Michael Through the Storm. A year later and the toll Michael took on the Albany community is still prevalent. You can see it in the tarps still on roofs and the stumps still in yards. Our Grayson Passmore tells us the story of a woman still waiting for home repairs. It's where I met my husband at Georgia. He and I both went to Georgia. Pictures of Jimmy Matthews, like the portrait here, hang throughout Dee Matthews' house. I met my husband, Jimmy, and that was Katie Bar the door. <laughs> Love at first sight, I guess. He had beautiful blue eyes. Dee lost Jimmy seven years ago to Parkinson's disease. Memories of their life together are framed throughout her house. There's no doubt Dee loved Jimmy, and it's also evident of her love of something else. The Dan McGill, our famous tennis coach. The photos of her Jimmy. And then the one of Coach Dooley and Eric. And their beloved school. But they, I've got missing several that go over there. Were almost lost forever last year. We go through a lot of, I think, thunderstorms and heavy rainstorms here in South Georgia, but uh, nothing compared to that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Matthew's house looks as if Hurricane Michael just passed it by, but one year later and there's a rather large problem still sitting in her yard, these huge tree stumps. But that's what I'm waiting for now is to get my insurance coverage to get the, those trees out of my yard. Matthew's home lost a few shutters, her pictures came down and two trees were uprooted. A stump in the front yard and back serve as reminders still. And so there have been lots of people that had a lot more damage than I did. So I guess basically I'm on the bottom of the list, which is fine. Matthews has spent the past 365 days thanking God he left her home as unscathed as it was. And she's been thanking her Albany neighbors for their help after the storm. I think this community is just wonderful doing that. When the need show comes, we show, <laughs> and it was it was great. Now, after a year of construction and rebuilding, the memories are going back up on the wall. We had some beautiful autograph pictures that we wanted to save for our grandchildren, you know, because they're dog fans too. <laughs> In Albany, Grayson Passmore, WLB News 10. Matthews and others like her just have to wait until insurance comes through and until construction companies are no longer backed up. In Bainbridge, a joint government office is working to get rid of homes that serve as reminders of Michael. There are several abandoned homes like this one throughout Decatur County. Someone lived here at the time of the storm but was forced to move. A fallen tree made it unlivable. The Bainbridge Decatur County Marshal's Office wants to clean up those eyesores. They either get homeowners to demolish the buildings or let the local fire departments use them to train the firefighters. You have investors that will come in and they want to build houses or 
people that you know want to move to our neighborhoods and nobody wants to move to a neighborhood when you when you're going to live next door to this or nobody wants to be the renter that lives next door and have to see or view that every day that they drive by the department has gotten rid of nearly 10 homes so far this year that were either damaged during the storm or dilapidated mock says his office has another nine or ten more homes on schedule to take care of in the next few months I think we can all agree that we hope South Georgia and the rest of the country never have to experience another storm like Hurricane Michael. Absolutely. Now we have all of these stories and many more as well as helpful tips on how you can prepare for natural disasters over on our website, WLB.com and at the WLB News 10 app. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Thank you for watching WLB News 10's Hurricane Michael Through the Storm.